Even when I'm afraid, I'm gonna let it shine. Even when I'm afraid, I'm gonna let it shine. Even when I'm afraid, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. This is a lot of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This is a lot of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This is a lot of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. I used to go down there a lot. So do you sing too? Uh, no. Yeah. Have you ever <laughs> Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Good, hurry. Not really. I annoy my brother. What's the bird's name? Mango. Five months old bird. Yeah, it's Mains. You. You. Okay. Mains. I think you should. I think you should stop moving him because I think maybe a little overwhelmed. Yeah. Because I'm not with you. That's very right. She doesn't get cold. He's one feathers. His name is Mango. Mango? Yeah, his name is Mango. We don't know if it's a boy or a girl. It's feathers. It's not keeping it warm. We thought it would be inside, so we brought the bird. But nope, it's outside. So now the bird is freezing cold. And it's going to die. But it just agreed with me. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Yeah, for, yeah, well, let's see because there's so many might be invites. 
So, so, but you've got a 12:30 time. Right. They want to get to their car service to meet his new and his sister. Yeah. Hey guys, guys, let's leave the little okay? It's stressed out and it might not like being moved around a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Our daughter, like your daughter, had a cold day. Do you know if it's a girl or a boy? No. I just call it a girl. Could be either one. And we call it a boy. What? It could be either one. I call it it. I call it I call it mango. Yeah, I call it it. I call it like its name is mango, so I call it mango, but in terms of gender, I just say it. You said hers. You said small size. Oh, what is it? Uh, it's a green tea yeah. conure. Oh, oh. Is it one of those that will live here? Yeah. I'll live you. <laughs> 25 <laughs> like, yeah. years 20. old. 20. Oh, is that right? 20. Mom said 25. Cold? No, she said 22, babe. So she'll die when you're 25. That's a nice looking Mango, I love mango. Bird. 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 So we went over to shoot a Hey, maybe sure your friend is coming? What are you doing? Uh, if she's cold, then let's go for her back. No. Why? She's cold <laughs> she's cold. Cold. Me and she's my bird and red. Red the killer. No. <laughs> that would not end well. Uh, this thing is protected. Would you want, I could get in this. Would you want red splatter in it? What? Red splatter in uh, Excuse me, babe, but red can't get in this. He can't even stick his jaw around it. They can get one of the bird's feathers. No, actually. Yeah, I think we should put him in the car. No, he's squeaking super loud. Or, we've had it for a month. Yeah. <laughs> because people are hanging out with their pets. Just like you said, so maybe we should. Red can't get to her. Stop calling people jokes. Thank you for this ministry of doing the online. 
it's really important. I really appreciate it. And that is about the coolest mask I've seen. Mom said she wants to get this piano. Yeah, I can play some. Birds. Just like my sister. Welcome, welcome to worship at All Saints in Big Sky on a lovely October morning on the very day that we commemorate St. Francis of Assisi. St. Francis is a beloved saint who is known for his care for the poor and his love of animals. And so we have invited not only people, but their animals to come to church this morning. And we'll later on in our service have a blessing for them. Just a few announcements uh, for those of you that may not have been here for a while or haven't been here at all these past few weeks. We at All Saints have developed some protocols for worship that are listed in the insert in your bulletin. And on the back side of that insert is a place for you to write your name and contact information just in case we would need to contact you this week. So we ask you to leave that sheet uh, by the usher in the offering basket. Uh, today, we celebrate uh, service of the word with our blessing of the animals. And I also want to just draw your attention to um, what's also listed in your bulletin that we do have some opportunities throughout the week uh, that are available via Zoom. If you are looking for 
uh, things to fill your time with. We have our weekly Tuesday Bible study that takes place at three o'clock via Zoom. And we have a Friday morning time of morning prayer at nine. And then in the next few months, there are going to be some opportunities for learning and discussion at Wednesdays at noon. And uh, Pastor Valerie is preparing for uh, two forums that will be held at Wednesday at noon later this month based on a book called God and the Pandemic. It's a short little book, but there is so much wisdom in it. So if you're interested in getting that book, uh, listening to it or reading it, and then starting to discuss it in a couple of weeks time with Pastor Valerie. That'll take place not this Wednesday, but the following Wednesday. And this Wednesday, um, the Gallatin Valley Interfaith Association, which hosts monthly gatherings that um, involving folks from lots of different faiths around uh, the Gallatin Valley is hosting a discussion on religion and um, issues of diversity and Black Lives Matter. And the newest deacon in the Episcopal Diocese of uh, our here in Montana is uh, Deacon Heidi Jones McGee, and she will be leading that discussion this Wednesday at 12. All of this is via Zoom, so you can take part from the comfort of your own home. Anyway, so please uh, keep, keep your eyes open to that. And uh, again, if you are not on our Friday news list, that's a great way to stay in touch with what's going on throughout the week. Well, welcome again to animals and people alike. Let's take a moment of quiet and prepare for worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, you know, this is kind of a silly song, isn't it? You know, but it's got a great message, really, to really think about it, because what it says is that there's a place in the kingdom for all of us, no matter what kind of animal we are, and no matter what our talents are. Now, not really allowed to sing right now, but this is an, a, a congregation participation song. You can clap when you're supposed to clap, you know. You can actually make some animal sounds and, uh, and still keep, yeah. And I particu have particular expectations about the cow and the howling coyote, okay, as you just saw demonstrated by Darius Larson. 
okay? Everybody, everybody's heard this song, right? All God's creators got a place in the choir. Some sing low, some sing higher, some sing out high on the telephone wire, and some just clap their hands and jump at anything they got. Listen to the bass, it's the one on the bottom where the bullfoot groups and the hippopotamus moves and groans with the big to do, and the old cop just goes, oh. oh, come on, we're in Montana, there are more cows than people in the state, we can do better than that, we can, and the old cow just goes, there you go. Well, the dogs and the cats, they take up the middle, and the honeybee hums, and the crickets fiddle, and the donkey brays, and the pony days, and the old coyote. Oh! All God's dirt got a place in the wild. Some sing low, some sing high, some sing out loud on the telephone wire, and some just clap their tail or anything they got. Listen to the top where the little bird sings. And we've got a bird. And the melody with the high voice ringing out. And all falls over everything. And the chicken bird disagrees. Singing in the night time, singing in the day. The little duck quacks and he's on his way. The possum don't have much to say. And the porcupine talks to herself. All God's kids got a place in the choir. Some sing low, some sing higher, some sing out loud on the telephone line. And some just clap their hands or walk or anything they got. Now here's the lesson of the thing. Everybody here is part of the plan. We all get to play in the great critter band. From the eagle in the sky to the whale in the sea. It's one great symphony. All God's critters got a place in the choir. Some sing low, some sing higher, some sing out loud on the telephone wire. And some just pop their heads. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Beloved God, from you come all things that are good. Lead us by the inspiration of your spirit to know those things that are right, and by your merciful guidance, help us to do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. So I see some children. If there's any children that want to come closer, I've got a story that I want to share. And I think we should have that bird with us. <laughs> So these are all stories about which saint, you guys? Um, what saint are we remembering today? Yeah. The saint who is remembered from animals. Can you see? Saint, can you see right here this name? Saint Francis. We're remembering Saint Francis. And Here's the thing about St. Francis. St. Francis not only cared for people, especially the people that were poor and needed lots of help, St. Francis cared for animals. And do you know what he's remembered for? He's remembered for saying words, preaching words, not only to people, but to the birds. And so I thought we would, we would read the sermon to the birds. All right. So this is St. Francis talking to the birds and we have a bird with us to talk to. Birds, my sisters, you are very precious to God. 
God created you and you must always praise God all the time, everywhere you go. God gave you feathered clothing. God gave you freedom to fly wherever you will. And God kept you safe on Noah's Ark to preserve your kind. You in turn have a special link to God because you fly in the sky. Others than this, you don't have to sow or reap, but God loves you all the same and gives you rivers and springs to shelter and tall trees to build your nests in. You have no need to weave or sew for God dresses you and your children in beautiful clothing. God loves you in a special way. And that is why, dear bird, you must never be ungrateful. Always try to praise God's name. So those are the birds. And you know then after worship today, do you know what I want you to look at? Look at Pastor Valerie over there. And do you see that she has a stole on that is covered with all of the birds of the air? So you have to look and see what birds are. Is that all? All the birds? No, just a few of the many birds in the air. Yes. But I wonder, does anybody want to take one of these books to the end before we have our blessing on the Okay. We can just First reading today is from Isaiah, chapter 5. Let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard than I have not done in it? When I expected it to, to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge and it shall be devoured. I will break down its walls and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed and it shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain on it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel and the people of Judah are his pleasant planting. He expected justice, but saw bloodshed. Righteousness, but heard a cry. Word of God, word of life. have the hand off of the animals here. <laughs> Please join me in responsive reading of Psalm 80. If you would respond with the bolded verses that are in the bulletin, please. Restore us, O God of hosts, let your face shine upon us and we shall be saved. You have brought a vine out of Egypt. You cast out the nations and planted it. You cleared the ground for it. It took root and filled the land. The mountains were covered by its shadow and the towering cedars by its boughs. You stretched out its tendrils to the sea and its branches to the river. Why have you broken down its wall so that all who pass me can up its grapes? The wild boar of the forest has ravaged it and the beasts of the field have grazed upon it. Turn now, O God of hosts, look down from heaven. Behold and tend this vine. Preserve what is your right hand has planted.
The second reading is from Philippians chapter three, Paul writes. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews. As to the law, a Pharisee. As to zeal, a persecutor of the church. As to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the, of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him. Not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ. The righteousness of God, the righteousness from God, based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death. If somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Word of God, word of life. Thank you. Thank you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to Matthew 21. Jesus said, listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planned a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to a tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, oh, this is the heir come. Let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Now, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at harvest time. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. 
When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. The parables that we hear in both our first reading from Isaiah and our gospel reading from Matthew today begin with vineyards, but they end with violence. Now, a vineyard isn't a place that we expect violence. A vineyard is, after all, a kind of a garden, a garden with this very clear purpose, the production of good grapes to make good wine, which let's remember for much of the world's history was safer to drink than water. <laughs> Too much wine, we know, can bring trouble, but in the right amounts, wine brings pleasure. And so wine is the drink of Seder meals and Holy Eucharist and weddings. But wine needs grapes grapes that are carefully cultivated and protected, sunned and watered, and grapes need vineyards for their peaceful production. But in both Isaiah and Matthew this morning, violence disrupts the vineyard. Our Isaiah reading ends with this verse, the Lord expected justice but saw bloodshed. Righteousness, but heard a cry, and that is not a cry of joy, but a cry of distress. And then in that parable from Matthew, the tenant farmers, hoping to profit personally, violently abuse and kill the innocent messengers of the landowner once, twice, three times. These scripture readings this morning are telling us something we may not want to hear, that we human beings are bent towards violence. Even though God is the one from whom comes all good things and God has formed us out of the dust for a purpose to bear good fruit, just fruit, but instead, we human beings are often bent towards violence. Now, there is violence and there is violence. And sometimes it is hard to distinguish between the two. But one kind of violence is born out of love and our desire to protect those who are dear to us, especially the vulnerable ones. This is the violence of the woman who finally, after months or years, strikes back and even kills an abusive husband because she knows that she and her children will not ever be safe while he is alive. Is it right that she serves a life sentence in prison for her actions? I don't know. And this kind of violence, this violence is also the violence of a child on the playground at school who has watched his friend be bullied again and again and again by that group of mean kids. And finally, it is too much for him, and he lashes out and breaks the biggest bully's nose. And for the first time in weeks, the victim of those bullies is able to smile. I want to be clear that it's not that this kind of violence is good, but these kind of violent acts are at least born out of love for those who are vulnerable. 
But then there is another kind of violence. The violence that erupts from a desire to hurt and destroy and a belief that one will personally gain if another person loses. I just heard from friends of mine who just happened to be a gay couple living here in Montana, that not even a month ago, they woke to the crash of a rock through their front window. And the rock had words painted on it that I won't repeat in a sermon. And I thought, isn't this 2020? Aren't we past such ugly acts? Ugly acts of violence, meaning to intimidate and promote fear. But of course we are not. We are still deep in violence. And we have so many means. Prisoners are still tortured. Women are still drugged and then raped. Children are still screamed at and made to feel worthless. We commit violence with so many things, but often just with our words and sometimes with our silence. Perhaps you have felt how silence can be like a knife cutting into your skin, leaving what feels like an open wound and a desperation for healing. Our scripture text this morning push us to ponder our own tendency towards violence, our habit as human beings of seeing bloodshed as the only way forward. But more importantly, our texts this morning remind us who God is, that our God is not a God who lashes out with violence in the face of our violence. In fact, our God is one who came into our violent world as the most vulnerable thing you could imagine, a human baby. A baby who grew up to tell stories and heal people who were sick and invite all of the wrong people to dinner. A baby who finally became a grown up who was executed, though he was innocent, in the cruel and common way of the time. In the story of our faith, my sisters and brothers, God suffers and endures violence, but it doesn't end there. The cross, and we know this, is not the last word. The third day comes and the tomb is empty and Jesus is raised. Resurrection lives on the other side of death. Resurrection is where we are going. Even though we are victims and perpetrators of violence both. So we can say our faith in this simple way. That God has come to us in Jesus to lead us from violence to resurrection. Even though that may take a long time. Because God is a God who desires joy-filled, abundant life for us and for all of creation. Life that is free from fear of rocks thrown through our windows and bullies in the schoolyard or bullies in the conference room. Life where we can live safely in our skin, giving and receiving love that really is love. And if we trust, if we trust that resurrected life is the promise, the goal that God offers us, well, then we can join Paul this morning in our second reading. Paul, who speaks about straining forward to what lies ahead, pressing on toward the goal the goal of peace, that peace which the Hebrew word is better than our word, that word that is shalom, 
which isn't just an absence of violence, but is harmony and wholeness and completeness and prosperity and welfare and tranquility for, for all of creation. That kind of shalom peace, a peace where no one in our world has to live in the wake of post-traumatic anything. This is the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus, calling us into resurrection and peace. And it is God, not any one of us who is gonna bring about that peace. God is the one who is faithful even when we're faithless, the one who is loving even when we feel unlovable, and the one who is always a peacemaker even when we are acting violent. But, but we are invited to practice that peacemaking. And we can start so simply thinking about the language that we use. What words? do we need to use and what words do we need to avoid so that we cannot cut someone like a knife with them? And how do we find ways to dialogue truthfully so that both of us feel heard and so that we can disagree but gently and respectfully leaving both parties in dignity afterwards? And how do we find our ways to teach children and grandchildren and all the children that we love how to really be peacemakers in this world when it is so much easier for us to teach them how to be fighters or how to be winners? It's no easy task, but here is what I see this morning, that God has given us some important helpers. Helpers as we press on toward this goal of peace and resurrection. And who are they? There are animals. Look around you. Our dear pets. And even those that have been victims of human abuse or human neglect, these very pets are so often such comfort to us. Some of these pets we have brought here today for a blessing and others we bless in absentia because we know they would not do so well being here this morning. We bring them though today for God's blessing because it's so clear that they are a blessing to us. I mean, think of the wordless love that so many of you experience whenever you walk in the door and a dog runs to greet you with absolute boundless love? Or what about the playfulness of a little baby animal that makes you laugh when you have been so weighed down by a hard day? Or the calm purring of a cat who brings your heart rate down. Or the relationship that I have heard so many times about that can develop between a person and a horse. The bond that grows with all of that grooming and taming and exercising. All of these animals do something remarkable. By the grace of God, they help us become more human. Human in the best sense of the word. Human in the way that God intends us to be human. Rooted in love. Radiating peace. And pressing on toward resurrection. Amen.
church is one foundation is Jesus Christ her Lord she is his creation by water and the word from him he came and sought her to be his holy bride with his own During the prayers of the people, when you hear the words in your mercy, please respond with hero prayers. Today, October 4th is St. Francis Day. St. Francis of Assisi chose the simple life. He cared fervently for the church, the earth, its animals, peace, and the poor. Let us now pray for them. God most high, we pray for the church, for our bishops, Michael, Elizabeth, Marty, Lori, for our own congregation, for the ministry of Pope Francis, for the work of Franciscan friars and sisters, and for churches that are struggling with few resources. We pray to you, O oh God, our Redeemer, that all the baptized may produce good fruit. In your mercy. Yours. We pray for the earth and its animals, for farmlands, for animals whose habitat is threatened, for livestock, for all the animals that we raise, and for service animals. We pray to you, O oh God, our creator, that the earth may be sustained with your care and that we will sow joy. In your mercy. Yes. We pray for peace between nations in cities throughout our coming election, between generations, between longtime citizens and new immigrants in our churches, in our families, and in our homes. We pray to you, O oh God, our peacemaker, that we may become instruments of your peace. In your mercy. We pray for those who are poor, for the unemployed, for migrants, for the oppressed, for orphans, for children in foster care. We pray to you, O oh God, our provider, that we may give assistance where there is poverty and need. In your mercy. Yes. 
We pray for all who are suffering, for those laid low by the coronavirus, for those living with anxiety, for those whose sorrow is known only to you, for those today who will die, and for those whose names we call to you silently or, or aloud. And, and please feel free to name anyone you would like prayers for. Joan, yeah. Madi. Akra. Ginger. We pray to you, O oh God, our comforter, that we may sow hope where there is despair. In your mercy. We pray in thanksgiving for the life of Dick Harper and all those who love and miss him. Keep us in communion with them. In your mercy, we pray finally for ourselves, strengthen our faith in Christ and hear the prayers of our heart. We pray to you, O oh God, our healer, that we may sow pardon where there is injury and love where there has been hatred. In your mercy, enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray as we trust in your salvation through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now on this day that we remember St. Francis, we offer a special prayer for all of the animals that are dear to us. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for creatures that serve us, befriend us, enrich us, entertain us, and protect us. Bless us in our care for our pets and animals here with us and those that are at home. We also give thanks for those dear pets whom we loved and who have now died and whose memories we still cherish. Help us recognize your power and your wisdom in the variety of creatures that live in our world and hear our prayers for all those that suffer overwork, hunger, or ill treatment. Oh God, protect your creatures, guard them from all evil by the power of your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now for those of you that wish, uh, Pastor Valerie and I will make our way around uh, the congregation and we'll ask the name of your pet and give a blessing to it. This is Mango, right? Mm -hmm. Mango, God bless you. Keep you in Jesus' name. Amen.
Now may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And all the rest of the year. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Because say peace to whoever's watching. Peace of the Lord be with you and blessing on all the animals that have meant so much to you in your life. Because I'm really getting annoyed about how many keeps moving it. Peace. Uh, what? Uh, six goods. Is that in a different building? What? Is that in a different building? Uh, in a new school. New school, yeah. Mm -hmm. How's it going? It's going good. Good. Peace be with you. This a lot of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This a lot of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This a lot of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Even I'm afraid, I'm gonna let it shine. Even when I'm afraid, I'm gonna let it shine. Even when I'm afraid, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. This a lot of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This a lot of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This a lot of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. 
Now, let us pray in thanksgiving for the word. Glory and praise to you, O God, for your words of promise with Abraham and Sarah, Moses and Miriam, Deborah and Elijah, Mary and Mary Magdalene, Peter and Paul. We receive your word of challenge and comfort. By your spirit, equip us to serve those in need, faithfully following your word, Jesus Christ, our companion and savior, now and forever. Amen. Now gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. <clears throat> Creatures worship God most high, sound every voice in earth and sky. Hallelujah, hallelujah, sing brother's song, explain. 
Using the example of St. Francis of Assisi, let us go in peace and serve the Lord.